Welcome back to the show. Well, the Church of Scientology has long been shrouded in secrecy and surrounded by controversy. And now a new book called Fair Game takes a look at the Aussie connections to the religion. The author, Steve Kinane, joins us now. Steve, good morning to you. Thanks morning. for joining us. Thank you. Now, in the 90s, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman were famously uh, linked up and they were Scientology's golden couple at, at the time. Talk us about, talk to us about, and tell, tell us about the influence of the religion on their relationship at the time. They had a deep influence. They were involved um, right from the beginning, right till the end. They helped facilitate the relationship in the first place, and they sabotaged the relationship and they killed it off. If you go back to 1990, Tom and Nicole were on the set together of Days of Thunder, and at that point, he was married to Mimi Rogers. Now she was a Scientologist. She was the woman who got Tom involved in Scientology in the first place, and they basically killed off that relationship. They encouraged Tom. To, to get rid of Mimi Rogers, they delivered the do divorce papers mm. to Mimi Rogers and they encouraged him to pursue Nicole Kidman. Now, at that stage, um, if you look at what was going on with Nicole Kidman, she was very early on in her uh, film career. And um, they, what they didn't realise at the time was that her father was a psychologist. Mm. Now, in Scientology, psychology is considered evil. So then they had to find a way of getting her involved in Scientology, which she did. She got up to operating Thetan level two. She moved into the Scientology International base. They had a full Scientology wedding as well. So they were deeply involved in the relationship. Nicole got Scientology, got Tom to withdraw from Scientology from about 1993 to about 1998. And this drove David Miscavige nuts, who was the head of Scientology. But they had a spy in the house. In the relationship, Michael Dovan, was the personal assistant to Tom Cruise and he was feeding information back to head office about what Nicole was saying about Scientology, what was going on in, re in the relationship and they, from 1998 onwards, they planted a seed in Tom's head and they said basically, you know, Nicole's a bad person, you should leave this Get relationship out. back and it goes to 2001 and that's when the phone tapping happens. Amazing. And she even had the house um, looked at for bugs and the bugging was so good that they couldn't even pick up the fact that she was being bugged. That's right, I spoke to somebody who worked on her staff and they had to sweep the whole house for bugs and they couldn't find any bugs and they worked out in the end the phone tapping happened at the telephone exchange. Now Bert Fields, who's the lawyer for Tom Cruise, told me that Tom had nothing to do with this but Marty Rathbun, the former uh, senior executive in Scientology, he said that Tom wanted mm. Nicole's phone to be tapped. So they swept the, the place, couldn't find anything and they worked out in the end it was, it was happening at the telephone exchange. Now you've they, written, sorry, no. you've written that Scientology does spend millions of dollars yeah. gathering intelligence on people. That's right. Why? Well, they spent in one, on one individual case on Pat Broker, 10 to 12 million dollars uh, putting him under investigation for 25 years. They do it because they want to silence dissent. Any critics, they want to dig up dirt on them or intimidate them. They Have do... you suffered from that as well? Um, I, I don't know if they are investigating me or not. They may be. Um, I assume that they do. I, I work on that assumption. Um, so they certainly have done it to journalists before. They tried to frame one journalist, Paulette Cooper, in the 1970s for a bomb hoax. She was potentially um, facing a, a jail threat. At one time they even um, uh, they leafleted her apartment block saying that she was a prostitute had, who had venereal disease and molested children. Oh, wow. So they try and intimidate critics and putting them under investigation is a massive part of how they try and, to intimidate critics. Well, I tell you what, the book is called Fair Game. It yeah. is a fascinating read. They've uh, they just opened up a big news centre here in Sydney. So mm. um, it'll be interesting to see what sort of reaction it is, but well done on the book, Steve. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks for that. Thank you, Steve.